see the iterator pattern here, pattern today. We all know that we use these iterators for accessing the aggregate of objects. So iterators, the intention of iterators are it provides an access to access the elements of an aggregate. Uh, that to uh, we can uh, uh, you know access them sequentially without exposing the implementation of the aggregate uh, object. So iterator can also provide different ways of uh, iterating through an uh, uh, aggregate object without exposing its internal details. So we can implement different iterators for the same aggregate. Say for example, if we have a list uh, aggregate, we can have a, a sequential display. We can also have a reverse display. We can have uh, skip display so we can have multiple uh, iterations through the same uh, aggregator without implementing all this uh, iteration um, logic inside the aggregate. So the main purpose here is to uh, split the responsibility of iterating through the aggregate to a separate class. So here the iterator object takes care of all the responsibilities of uh, iterating through the aggregates. Separating travel me mechanisms uh, from the list object, it also makes uh, you know implementing multiple different uh, policies without enumerating all these things in the list. We need not have to uh, list all the uh, kinds of iterations that we provide in the list uh, object itself. So this is a generic list and iterator, uh, uh, you know, it's, a, it's the diagram. So if your list generally it, uh, uh, it implements only the list specific uh, operations. For example, it counts the elements of the list. It also appends, you can append into a list, you can uh, uh, remove a uh, list element. But all the traversal like first element, next element, is done, or current index, all those things are moved to a list, a list iterator. So it will have an index also. It uh, stores an index to the current object. So a sample code uh, for this itera uh, iterator and list is uh, shown here. The list class, uh, the, the list template uh, implements the list of list aggregate. So it will have a default list capacity and it implements some functions like uh, count and get. So here the get function is implemented in the list or list class to provide an access to the iterator. So similarly we have a generic iterator class. So it defines four uh, functions, which are like first, next, is done, and current item. We, um, we inherit from the generic iterator class in this list iterator, and this takes care of implementing all those things. So if you have, if you want to have one more iterator tomorrow, say maybe a reverse iterator, it will have to again it, uh, inherit from the same iterator class, and it has to implement those uh, uh, implementations. So these are, uh, uh, this is the first one, is the constructor for list iterator. It takes care of initializing the list. So for all the uh, iterator uh, objects, we have to pass a aggregate uh, information. So it has to know which list to pass. So this will have a pointer to the list. The first will uh, initialize the current position to first, and uh, next will uh, move it to the next object. Is done will tell whether uh, all the list objects are traversed or not. And uh, similarly, current item will return the current item of the list of the list aggregate. So we have we have a function here which uh, uh, in, uh, you know prints all the employee details. So it goes through each uh, element from first to next. The iterator object is passed as a parameter to the function. So it takes care of printing all the employee details. Say for example, tomorrow we implement a reverse list, a rever you know, reverse list iterator, which will print all the iterator in the reverse order. Say for example, in the previous example, current position in case of reverse iterator will be the last object. So the next object will be current minus minus, and is done will be if the element is pointing to the first object, we say it's done. So similarly, uh, we have two iterators now. Same. Uh, print employee function will take both the iterators and it will print employees uh, employee list either in the forward uh, direction or in the backward direction. So that is the advantage of having an iterator. How does the iterator access the list object? A list object. Uh, 
So we are uh, passing a list of means to, you know the list uh, is passed in the constructor there. So it will have a pointer to the list. And there are some uh, spe special uh, functions implemented inside the list class which will uh, which will uh, help uh, all these iterators for uh, getting the objects or printing uh, the object or something like that. So, but some of the problems here are, uh, see it's a uh, client has to know, one problem with this is uh, the client has to know it, it's a list which it is traversing. So, it has to create a special in, you know, instance of list and it has to traverse through that. So, the client code is uh, commits to a particular structure. If tomorrow you implement list and iterator in a separate way or some other aggregate in a separate way, it has to change, uh, client has to change the code. So it would be better if we can change the, we can, you know, we can change the aggregate class without changing the client code because client code is the code that the client writes. So if we, if the client code remains same and only the aggregate changes, that would be better. So that can be implemented by something called uh, polymorphic iteration that we'll discuss now. Say for example, we have a skip list. Uh, so uh, for uh, if the client wants to access a skip list and as well as uh, a normal list, it need not have to change its code according to either list implementation or skip list in, in information. So this is a polymorphic iterator. So we um, we first implement an abstract list and a iterator. So abstract list will have functions like create iterator, count, uh, append, remove all those functions. And similarly, iterator will have first, next, is done, current item, all those things. So list and skip list, both of them inherit from abstract list and it will implement the list specific uh, implementation into the, in the code. But the client will interact only with abstract class and iterator class. Similarly, there is a list iterator and skip list iterator, which again inherits from iterator class and they will uh, implement the class the code which is specific to list iterator and uh, skip list iterator. The client will know only the abstract class iterators and uh, the responsibility of creating the iterator lies with abstract list itself. So there is a function here which, uh, which is called create iterator. So both list and skip list has to implement the create list, um, create iterator function. So if uh, the list object is created, it will take care of uh, implementing the list uh, iterator object. So client need not have to know what is the iterator corresponding to list and it can just call the uh, iterator function directly on the list and it can uh, traverse either list or skip list without knowing that there is a skip list iterator. Uh, so the applicability is uh, the client can access the aggregate objects without exposing its internal representation. So we don't uh, we don't have to know that there is a skip list, uh, skip list and normal list. So multiple travels traversals of aggregate objects are possible, and a uniform interface is provided by uh, this uh, whole uh, structure. Here is a structure. Um, we have an aggregate and iterator. Again, aggregator has the create uh, iterator. So, aggregate object will define an interface for uh, for the client to uh, create the iterator object. Whereas, this iterator will define an uh, interface for client to access the client objects, um, uh, iterator of iterator uh, functions. So, concrete iterator will implement all the iterator functions and the concrete aggregate will implement all the aggregate function. It will return the um, iterator instance for the concrete iterator. So, here is a code which implements uh, polymorphic iteration. So, we have an abstract list which has a function written inside it. Uh, it's a create iterator. It's a virtual class. And again, we have... Uh, create iterator uh, getting called by the list uh, list uh, so the list is implementing ab abstract list is the parent class and list is actually implementing the create iterator it's uh, returning an instance of the 
list it right Similar, similarly abstract uh, list so here we are creating an employee which is uh, which is of the type abstract list and at, a, at some point we assign this employee is equal to this and uh, so when we call the create iterator it, the C++ or the compiler will take care of uh, calling the proper uh, create function and it calls the create iterator of the proper uh, list uh, iterator. So there are some points which we have to take care of while implementing an iterator. So some of them are uh, how do we, you know, who controls the traversal? Is it the, the client or the iterator? So we can implement this traversal algorithms either in the client itself or in the iterator object. So if the client is implementing uh, all the traversal uh, algorithm, that is called an external iterator. So, um, but if the entire logic is with the iterator, it's called an internal iterator. So usually if the, obj uh, if the control is with the client, it will be uh, easier to traverse. Like uh, we can say next, next, next and uh, uh, traversal, uh, you know, we can compare two uh, lists, separate lists using a client code. But if the control is with, iter uh, with the iterator, it's easy to use, but you have very less control in the code. So who defines the traversal algorithm? It could be the aggregate class itself. Aggregate uh, can define uh, what should be the uh, traversal algorithm or the iterator uh, itself can define uh, the algorithm. So if the aggregate is uh, defining this algorithm, iterator is called, uh, here uh, iterator will be a dummy iterator. Aggregate class will take care of all the traversal algorithms also, but uh, iterator will just have the position um, stored in it and uh, it, it's just a dummy um, function. But if the iterator implements all the traversal algorithm, it's easy to use different iteration algorithms. So tomorrow if you want to implement some other algorithm, you need not have to change the aggregate class. Only the iterator class can be changed and the aggregate class like list, all those things will remain same. You can reuse uh, same iteration algorithm on different uh, aggregates also. So since the control lies with the iterator, iterator can be, uh, we can reuse the code. One problem with this is uh, since the logic remains outside the aggregate class, aggregate class has to provide sufficient uh, access for the, for the iterator to access its private uh, members. Say for example, if there is a list, the iterator should have some access to the iterator, uh, all the list elements to access it, go to the next one, all those things. So this uh, access can be provided in two ways. It can, uh, aggregate can make the iterator class, it's a class a friend of its, so that uh, no need to implement uh, any special operations by the aggregate for uh, this itera iteration to access its uh, private members, or we can make it protected all the operations which are uh, uh, which will be used by the um, iterator will be made protected so that way uh, only the iterator subclasses can access these operations but one problem with this is um, with a friend aggregate is you can't have multiple um, iterator uh, iter you can't go on uh, defining different uh, iterators there every time you have to make modifications to the aggregate and it's also important that you make the uh, whole uh, iterator and aggregate uh, implementation robust. So what we mean by robust here is, say for example, when the iteration is, uh, iteration iterator is pointing to a per particular object in the aggregate, say one, uh, one element gets added or say one element gets deleted. In that case, either uh, aggregate iterator will end up repeating an object twice or either it will skip a couple of objects. So this has to be handled and we have to make the whole code robust. So this can be uh, made in multiple ways. Either uh, the aggregate can take care of informing the iterator in some way that uh, the elements have changed. Either it can um, you know, maintain an internal state which gets changed, which will indicate the iterator that uh, some objects have been in added or deleted. So accordingly, uh, it has to reinitiate itself. The normal functions which are implemented in an iterator are like first, next, is done, current item. 
so these are uh, general uh, fu generic functions which all the iterators provide but in addition to that we can also think of uh, uh, implementing previous or skip to functions which will be useful so while using polymorphic iterators which we uh, explained in the previous one we have to be little careful because uh, the memory allocated will be uh, uh, you know the object allocation happens dynamically so it will be a little overhead while running the code so we, if we have to use it only if it is uh, required and also in case of polymorphic um, uh, iterators it is the control of deleting the polymorphic iterator lies with the client code if the client code forgets to delete the uh, uh, polymorphic iterators uh, there will be memory leaks because iterator gets created by a function called create iterator so that can be handled in a different way which we'll discuss later if it is a uh, recursive aggregate uh, class uh, object then it is easier to use internal iterators so we discussed that there are two kinds of iterators one could be an external and one could be internal so for uh, recursive ones it's always uh, better to use uh, internal iterators so there is one more thing called null iterators uh, as the name suggests it's all it always returns null this is usually used for uh, handling the boundary conditions if there, are, there is a big tree and uh, when we when the iterator asks for a an object i mean uh, iterator of a particular point all the uh, you know middle points will return a valid objects or uh, valid iterators whereas the leaf nodes will uh, return in null iterators so this way all the traversals can be handled in a single uh, uniform way so we said a uh, polymorphic iterate uh, polymorphic iterators can have a little uh, memory leaks in it so that can be handled using uh, something called uh, iterator pointer so uh, in case of uh, polymorphic iterators the, the responsibility of re deleting the uh, iterator lies with the client so in this case we create a class in such a and it overrides both the star and equal to operators in such a way that iterator iterator of the operator gets created on the stack so this is a uh, sample code so it's a template iterator pointer it has a uh, constructor which initializes the iterator whereas uh, the destructor takes care of deleting that uh, pointer it overrides both uh, a star operator and uh, you know both the operators and it will return the pointer uh, and the object of the iterator so if a client calls this create iterator the moment uh, employee gets deleted iterator pointer uh, you know the one, once the iterator pointer uh, goes out of the uh, scope it gets deleted automatically that's all i have but do you have any questions